Isaac and his mother lived alone in a small house on a hill. Isaac kept to himself, drawing pictures and playing with his toys as his mom watched Christian broadcasts on the television. Life was simple, and they were both happy. That was until the day Isaac's mom heard a voice from above. Your son has become corrupted by sin. He needs to be saved. I will do my best to save him, my lord, Isaac's mother replied, rushing into Isaac's room, removing all that was evil from his life. Again, the voice called to her. Isaac's soul is still corrupt. He needs to be cut off from all that is evil in this world and confess his sins. I will follow your instructions, Lord. I have faith in thee, Isaac's mother replied as she locked Isaac in his room away from the evils of the world. One last time, Isaac's mom heard the voice of God calling to her. You've done as I've asked, but I still question your devotion to me to prove your faith. I will ask one more thing of you. Yes, Lord, anything. Isaac's mother begged. To prove your love and devotion, I require a sacrifice. Your son Isaac will be this sacrifice. Go into his room and end his life as an offering to me to prove you love me above all else. Yes, Lord, she replied, grabbing a butcher's knife from the kitchen. Isaac, watching through a crack in his door, trembled in fear. Scrambling around his room to find a hiding place, he noticed a trap door to the basement hidden under his rug. Without hesitation, he flung open the hatch, just as his mother burst through his door and threw himself down into the unknown depths below. Hey, how's it going, non-existent YouTube fans? This is Tragic Comedian here. Um, I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is, uh, I was going to start recording The Walking Dead today, finally. I got everything figured out and stuff like that, and I was going to start recording it so I could get done with all, all five episodes as soon as possible, so I could do the 400 when it comes out tomorrow, as of today, which is June, July 2nd. So, uh, everything was figured out, it was all working fine, except the game itself. I started recording and did the whole beginning monologue and all that stuff, and then the game started and it crashed. The whole game crashed, all my recording stuff was still going to witness it and stuff, and it was a, it was, oh, it was a mess, I was so pissed. So I had to delete Walking Dead and reinstall it, which is going to take the rest of the day, probably. But the good news is, I finally figured out how to record The Binding of Isaac. Uh, which is, as I've said before, supposedly a notorious hard game to record. I found an incredibly simple way to record it that I can't believe I didn't think of before, and I feel stupid that I didn't. Um, but now that I have it recorded, or able to record, I'm super excited because this is one of my fa this is my favorite game on uh, the computer of all time. I, I absolutely love it. It's endlessly replayable. Everything about it's incredible. It's religious based in a hilarious way. It's made by Edmund McMillan, the guy who made uh, Super Meat Boy with Team Meat, uh, and I, I love all the games he made. It makes they're amazing. Um, so yeah, there's my little speech about how amazing this game is. Uh, one more thing to say before I get started. The way this is going to work is I'm going to do one normal game and then one challenge game to try and make the video a little longer because sometimes these run-throughs can go bad and I can die in like 
in five seconds. It's happened before. I'm pretty bad at this game. So it might happen. So I want to do both to try and make it longer. And then on top of that, I'm not going to do it for this episode. But it, if you guys want me to, I'll do it for the other ones. As you go through the Binding of Isaac, the character's appearance changes depending on the items you get. And I was planning originally on doing a quick draw of my character when he died at the end of it. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this one just because I want to get editing and stuff like that as quick as possible because I'm leaving soon. But if you want me to do that for the other episodes, just comment and tell me that hey do a little quick draw at the end and I'll do one for the start the one for the normal game and one for the challenge game and I'll just do a fast forward version of me drawing that at the beginning um, so yeah again tell me in the comments if you want that uh, So now that that's said let's get started there are several characters in this game there's Isaac, Magdalene, Cain, Judas, Eve, and Samson as well as a character whose name is just question marks or as I call him, Mark. He's not on here because he's a secret character you have to figure out how to unlock. So, um, if you haven't figured it out already or don't know, all the characters are based off of religion. There's Isaac, Mary Magdalene, Cain from Cain and Abel, Judas, Eve, Adam and Eve, and then Samson, who I can't really think of right now. I'm gonna play as Cain because he is my favorite. Each character starts with different stats, and except for Isaac, who starts with one bomb, every other character starts with an item. Like, she starts with Yum Heart, which is a space item where you can heal yourself one heart. He starts with Lucky Foot, which makes it so you get rare and better items, which is why I like him so much, plus his attack is pretty high. Judas uh, starts with the Book of Belial, which I don't know. I can never really remember what that does. Eve starts with Horror of Babylon and Dead Bird. Horror of Babylon makes it so out half a heart. She turns into this giant demon thing that just wrecks everything. And then Dead Bird is when she takes damage. She has a little hair clip that's a bird on her head. And when she takes damage, that bird flies off and starts attacking people in the room. I don't know about Samson yet. I mean, I do, but I don't have one locked. So I don't want to spoil anything. Even though I already know and spoiled it for myself. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Useless room. This is um, actually a boss. In the first, second room I go into, a boss. I don't know, right? Um, so I've never figured out why those guys are there. They're a boss from towards the end of the game. They're normally in like bubbles of gel and there's one giant one. Oh, that's a good one. Um, this is actually the, the item Samson starts out with. Uh, spoilers. Sorry. Oh, I hate Widow. This boss is a cheap piece of shit. Anyway, um... What was I saying? Oh yeah, that boss. Normally when you fight him, at the end of the game, he, uh... It's like a giant gelatinous blob with a worm inside it. It's supposed to be like an embryo or something. But uh, this is probably going to end quickly. I, I I hate Widow so much. I'm, oh god. I'm probably going to die like very, very soon. Because I've been terrible at this game and Widow is a piece of trash. But uh... I'm gonna quit talking so I don't die for a sec, okay? Okay, back to talking. Um, and you kill it and it splits into two smaller embryos and so on and so forth until it's just those worms. And it's a major boss in a boss room at the end, towards the end of the game. And I can never figure out why they put it in those random rooms of the early game. There's like three different rooms that they'll appear in. There's one where it's, they're surrounding a transfusion machine. Well, this is a good item. There's uh, one that's surrounding a transfusion machine where there's four of them. 
there's one that's... Um, just surrounding rocks like you saw. It's just weird how it's just early on randomly in the game and it still has the health bar and stuff. It's, it's like, why is that there? This is a, a serious boss in the game. Why are you here in the first room I went into, you know? Yeah, so I'm going to explain the items I have so far. Mr. Mega makes it so bombs explode bigger. If you didn't see how my bomb was all super big. <sighs> Excuse me. It had a face. Um, shit. And the other one I got, Rage, which gave me the headband. Makes it so I believe every three enemies killed, you get a significant damage boost. Oh god, if I die against these fucking spiders. I hate spiders in this game so much. Their movements are so, like, unpredictable. I should have died there. That was pure luck. Uh, I'm gonna go down here real quick before I take on the boss and go into that shop. And hopefully it'll have a heart or something. Let's see, a heart. And I don't have anything. I can't afford anything else. Oh, this is a good item right here. It's uh, rem it's all it's reminiscent of the bridge from Legend of Zelda, though that you cross single gaps in dungeons. I think it's kind of supposed to be a reference to that, because this game is full of references. This is an easy boss. A little uh, pro tip for this boss. There's a certain point where he pops up and goes Mow! and like shoots a bomb at you, like that. You can still hit him for a little bit. Like if you avoid the bomb beforehand, you can still hit him. See, after he goes under, he, you'll, you can still sit there and shoot at him even though he's not there and he'll still take damage. There's a little hint there to make him a little easier. See, he's not there and he was still taking damage. It's a strange little glitch and or cheat that I use a lot against this guy to defeat him. Another thing you can do if you're good with bombs and you don't mind wasting them is when he jumps up, plant one bomb there and if he gets hit by it, he dies immediately. Instead of taking damage like some, <laughs> some enemies do. Or some bosses do. That's embarrassing. item better be something that lets me fly. I don't have a key. I need that key. God damn it. Oh, that is like bullshit. Oh, oh. I'm gonna die in this room. Oh. I've noticed actually playing through this, I usually do better on my Mac for some reason. Uh, Bandicam and Fraps aren't made for Max. They are non-existent in the Mac universe. So... I can't get them to record with. It's bothersome. Sorry if I'm being quiet. I'm, I'm going into, like, tragic tries hard mode. <laughs> so I don't die. I was hoping I would get a key for that gold room, but I didn't. And I'm fighting 
the husk on top of that. This is this is just great. Boom! Rage and that bomb drop there. That was this. That was way too easy. <laughs> The husk, I guess, is a relatively easy boss, though. He's basically like a leveled up version of... Uh... I don't want either of those... at all. They're not worth a heart, in my opinion. Oh, you piece of shit. I gotta go. There's nothing I can do to get that key or that gold room. Damn it, that's gonna set me back. That pisses me off. I hate it when the game does that. Especially about the fact that they dropped a gold key, which makes it so I can freaking pick up. I can open any door in the entire level for free. In that entire floor. And they drop it right in front of me when I have no keys. Right in the same room as a gold door. Oh, that's so fucking... That's such bullshit. That's not allowed. Oh, yeah, now I get a fucking key. Bullshit. Oh, it's all because I used that one key to get that heart for fucking pin. Fucking pin. I didn't take a single heart of damage from him. I could have beaten him without that key and gotten that room. Oh, hey, look, it's these guys again. Wow. Fusion machine, like I told you. Not worth my time. I just realized I haven't found uh, the secret room yet. I haven't shown you that. If you don't know about it, I haven't shown you guys the secret room yet. I'll go do that because I haven't found the gold room either. So, in spaces like this, there's a chance that there might be a secret room like that along one of the walls which that was a crap secret room but they give you sometimes items sometimes uh some really interesting stuff can happen sometimes it's just a shit ton of money you never really know <gasps> bum friend this guy you give him money and eventually he poops out items oh that's a that was a good one um but then there's an item he gives you that it boosts your chances to get an angel room, which gives you a free heavenly item. The heavenly items are like stuff like rosaries, and uh, there's one that's a dove and it lets you fly, and stuff like that. Oh god damn it. Uh, so I try to give bums money as much as I can in this game, because you get free items, so you get items for it. So you can even get a really cool item I love called Bum Friend, which makes it so the bum follows you around and picks up money and shit. Uh, that was a mini boss, just like the kind of like those worm things are. And they have a little skull on the map, as you can see. They're the seven deadly sins. That one was pride, there's sloth, gluttony, greed, lust, envy. All of them are in the game as, as bosses. That's a, that's a good item, actually. I have two items that are incredibly rare now. Rage and Magdalene are incredibly rare items because they are starter items for for the characters. If you remember, I said Yelp Heart was a starter item from Magdalene at the beginning. Exceedingly rare. And yet I got both of them. That's never happened before. Ugh! I think we can do about that. Oh, I don't like this room. I don't like this room. Part of me wants to use my uh, Q item there to stun them all, because I'm pretty sure that's what this one does, but it's a waste. I need that for the boss, you know? Ooh, a heart. 
Um, so, I have a little, another little question I would like your viewers to answer. Uh, for my next game that I'm going to do a let's play of, I'm either going to do, oh, I guess it just does damage. I am either going to do The Binding of Isaac, or not The Binding of Isaac, I'm playing that right now. Uh, I'm either going to get Deadpool, to do a playthrough of that, because I love Deadpool. I loved him before, uh, I, I loved Deadpool before the X-Men Origins made him retarded. I loved him before he was cool. And, uh, and he has his own game if you don't know, and I'm really excited for it, and I'm gonna get it no matter what, but the debate is should I get it first for 40 bucks and do a let's play of it or should I get a game like this called Rogue Legacy I think where you it's like a ghost and goblins type game where while well, you're playing through it as you die you pick a successor who's your hair or your heir and you have to go through and kill the bosses and stuff and every time it's randomly generated just like this the only difference is you don't have to start over from scratch get upgrades and stuff you can purchase at the beginning of each game that stay there the rest of the game and the bosses you kill stay there the rest of the game so you don't refight any bosses and stuff but the enemies all respawn the map all reorganizes and stuff and different shit happens because like the different areas all have different uh, I don't know I guess like problems Traits, yeah, that's the term, traits. Like, you can get a colorblindness trait, which makes the whole game black and white. There's um, dwarfism. There's just all these different cool traits you can get. For characters, like, gay and lesbian is a trait, and I think that has, like, no effect on the game at all. They're just there. It kind of makes me laugh. Cause like, part of me wants to be all artistic and be like, yeah, gay and lesbians in the game. It's like a statement about how being gay or lesbian doesn't matter. Cause it, cause it really doesn't. Like, I don't know, a person's a person. It doesn't fucking matter what sexuality you have. Uh, but then at the same time, it's like, I'm not gonna, like, if I can critique games artistically, I don't know shit about shit. It's a fucking game. And the they decided to put fucking gay and lesbian into it as traits. What the fuck do I know? Maybe they're just like, hey, let's put it in there. Well, why not? You know? For all I know, that could be the case. I don't. Oh, I was gonna go in there and bomb them and kill them all at once. God, I'm terrible. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's the end of that. I'm gonna do a challenge match now. I'm gonna do Spider Boy because that's the one I've been trying. But uh, for every video after this, I want you guys in the comments to tell me which challenge you want me to try out. I don't know if they let me do the ones I've already beaten, but if, if they do and you guys want me to do it, I will do that one again. Those ones again because I've only beaten two of them. But he didn't really miss much. Those two, one of them was like a normal game, but every floor had one of the seven deadly sin. Excuse me. I ordered the Saturday Night Live mini bosses, and you had to kill each one at least once. Um, before I continue on, let me explain how these work. Mainly this one. Um, challenges have random things put on them. Like the first one, Dark is the Night, makes it so the map is completely blacked out. You can't tell where you are. This one gives you various items, and because it gives you so many items from the start. It makes it so there's no gold room, so there's no point, in my opinion, of exploring the whole floor. So I usually just go straight to the boss if I can find it and uh, get through each floor as quick as possible. Because there's really, except for maybe collecting a few pennies, there's no real reason to waste the hearts going through each level, or each room, just to get absolutely nothing out of it. If there was experience points, 
and shit like that, yeah, I would do it, but there's not. It's just, like, the chance that one of them will drop an item or money, you know? Future use, which rarely happens. So I just usually go through to the boss, kill the boss, and then get the item the boss drops. Chasing that around, I have full hearts. Um, I don't know, I, I probably didn't explain like the Q and space stuff yet. Uh, the Q item slot is always something like a pill or a tarot card of some set, some sort. And uh, another cool thing that's like randomly generated about the game every time you play, the pills do something different, like right here, I have no clue what it does. Even though I've had this pill before, I don't know what it does. It lowered my luck. That sucks, you know? But then the tarot cards, like, uh, six, the lovers, always does the same thing. It always gives me two hearts. If that's what it does. Sometimes I don't, I have trouble remembering what each card does. I know the world shows off everything on the map. The tower, like, drops a shit ton of bombs all over the place. The chariot turns you into a rainbow unicorn that's invulnerable. There's one that gives you random effects. There's a bunch of stuff like that. <sighs> Excuse me. So, yeah. There's that, and then the space items, I'm actually kind of, well no I'm not, actually this is a challenge run, I normally don't get too many space items. But space items are items that are, go in that slot next to arrows. Um, they were originally in the game on like, uh, certain stuff that was added through a DLC. They were, they've been in the game since the beginning, like the Q items. Um, but there are special items that you can use at your leisure by pressing space. Like there's one that is a, a, a bomb that you, it's like a zombie head, and you press space. Ooh, ooh, golden poo, golden poo, so much cash. Oh, that's great. Uh, sorry. Anyway, um, there's one of them that's like a zombie head, and you, you press space. And Isaac holds him up in the air, and then when he releases space, he throws it in whatever direction he's looking at. And then at that point, it just acts like a bomb. It, like, wherever it lands, it sits there, blows up, and whoever... The difference is, whoever it blows up, it poisons. Dealing extra damage over time. So it's, just, so it's just, like, various items like that that let you do stuff. Um, uh, an interesting thing about this, when this first came out... I think there was like 50 or so items in the game, and then they released Wrath of the Lamb, which added like twice that many items to the game, so there's like a shit ton of items and never any possibilities and all that jazz, and then on top of that, they're remaking this game for Steam and uh, Xbox and PlayStation, especially PS Vita. Um, and last I heard, they were working on getting it signed with Nintendo to make it for the 3DS. It's called The Binding of Isaac, a Rebirth. And it's going to have The Binding of Isaac, The Binding of Isaac, Wrath of the Lamb. And then it's going to have uh, another update in it. Another like DLC type update that, has, that adds as many items as Wrath of the Lamb. So that means like a shit ton more. Plus it has multiplayer. No online multiplayer. Cause Edmund McMillan said that that would just make everything more complicated for everyone and make the game have to take longer to come out and it's already not gonna come out until next year most likely. Or at least the end of this year. 
but it's gonna have local multiplayer, which I'm super excited for. Like, I don't know how Body Classic multiplayer is gonna work. I'm assuming it's co-op. But I'm actually... I'm super excited for it, I can't wait. There's a loyalty discount for people who have the first game, which I do, obviously. So, I'm gonna get it for cheaper. And then on top of that, I'm gonna buy it for PS Vita and or 3DS. Because I'm obsessed with it. It's like the game N. Have you ever played that? That game was the shit when I was a kid. It's called N, and it's a flash game where you played as a ninja. And you would, like, do parkour off walls and stuff. It was a completely 2D side-scrolling type game. And you'd see the entire map, and you would do parkour, and, like, jump off walls, and, like, run off ramps and stuff like that. Uh, to collect gold. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, this is an interesting item. When I die, I come back as Mark. For a brief, like, second, because I usually die right afterwards, because I'm terrible. Um, when did I get 26 coins? My god almighty. <sighs> like, I swear I just had 15, and I spent 7 of it on an item. Now I have tw had 25 coins. Oh god, 27. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Ooh, I better get this one. Skatol, Skatol, Skatol. I am good. Yes. Best item in the game. Have I explained this item? I can't remember if I did or not. If not, it basically makes it so flies don't hurt you. They will still fly towards you, but they can't hurt you at all. It's a great item. These flies are a pain in my ass. Um, have I explained those guys in this yet? If not, I'll do it again anyways. Those guys are a reference to one of Edmund McMillan's older games called Gish. About a tar creature who wants... To, I, I forget the goal. His goal in life. But you play as a tar creature and you have to use your abilities to stick to walls and shit like that to get through the level. And it's really fun, but incredibly difficult. In, in, incredibly difficult. And it's not, I absolutely, it's, it's a great game. But I never play it. It's like, I'm terrible beyond belief at it. Like, the first level took me forever. Oh no, I don't want it. I don't want it. That's, no, stop it, that's bad. Bad. I'm gonna go get hearts. Get all this loot. That's good enough. I'm too lazy to go get that other one. And then with my still 20. Ooh, mom's. Mom's coin purse. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, let's. Please. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is a nice one. Oh, that is good. What does this do? Please be something good. Ball. Ooh, that is really good. Okay, and then I'm gonna buy another one with that. I'll get this too, just its strength. Um, I'll get the devil for the boss and then come back for strength. So yeah, if you didn't notice by the way, the second I got in the room, all my flies went after one of those two hollow things floating around, and they all died. Because that's what they do, they suicide bomb. Um, the enemies in the room for you, and depending on the enemy, they either kill you or 
get killed and just deal some damage. But they're still great. I still love attack flies. I'm actually getting pretty close to the end here. So, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, actually, this is... I think after this, there's one more, and I'm at the final boss. But, well, not the end game boss, but the final boss. Because you know how like, games have the final boss, and then there's sacred bosses like in Kingdom Hearts. There's the final boss. In Kingdom Hearts 2, there's the final boss. Uh, just in case you guys haven't played it, I don't want to spoil it. And then there's Sephiroth, who isn't a boss you have to fight. But he's, in my opinion, the end game boss because he's the hardest boss in the game. In my opinion, unless you have final mix, which adds another one, which makes it that he adds like two or three extra bosses that are incredibly difficult. This I love the map item so much. Um, these things in the middle here. I hate them, they are the bane of my existence, and what they do is they just sit there and shoot at you, but they're rocks, they're just scenery, so you can't kill them, you can't stop them from being assholes, the only way to stop them is to finish the level, or the, the room, and then they will finally leave, god damn it, and then they will finally leave you alone. I greed, no one likes you. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be so happy if this gets me a steam sale. Steam sale is uh, an item. Did it, what did, oh, just a fucking bomb, that's gay. A steam sale is an item that makes it so everything in the store is 50% off. Get it? It's a reference. Steam and their famous sales. It's a reference. I shouldn't have to explain it. And I probably didn't. I'm just being dumb. And I'm getting destroyed right now. There's no way I'm gonna beat this. Because of these fucking rock demon things. Oh yeah, this is this is the end of the level for me. I'm dying here. Or not. Oof. This is the end of the, the game for me. Unless I get them all with one with bombs. Oh, oh. Yes! Damn it. A trinket. Uh, I'm actually surprised I haven't gotten any of those yet. Trinkets give you random passive effects. Like, Flat Penny, I think, just gives you more money. I'm not 100% sure but they give you random passive effects that can be helpful and sometimes detrimental to the entirety of your life in this game. And it's sometimes really difficult. Oh, that's what it does. It sometimes makes it so when you pick up a penny, it drops a coin. Oh shit, I saw that one coming. Oh yeah, I forgot, I have the Ankh. So yeah, now I'm Mark. The deal with Mark is he does not have red hearts and cannot have red hearts. He can only have blue hearts, which don't last as long, or which are not permanent. I just got hit because I looked away to scratch my nose. <laughs> Itchy. Um, which aren't permanent and can be gained back just by picking up another blue heart. But they're rarer than red hearts for the most part. Which makes playing a sim incredibly difficult. Uh, I only have one heart. I'm gonna go for it. Because I'm not gonna find any blue hearts. Monstro! Monstro 2 in the I like Monstro. He's a cool interesting boss. Oh god. Oh, that only did half damage. That's surprising. I was expecting a lot more. 
Oh shit. Whoa. Wait, what? Oh, damn it. Oh, yep. There it is. <laughs> Dear diary, today I was killed by this thing and some. Oh, the fucking mosquito killed me? I thought I at least died by the boss. That's embarrassing. Damn it. I'm not even gonna read the rest of that. I'm so mad. <laughs> See you next time, guys.